It's December again, and at my house, we begin our celebrating right here at the front door, where I welcome my friends with a holiday wreath. This year, a fantastic snowflake wreath. In the next hour, I'm looking forward to sharing some ideas that might become part of your celebrations. With my special guests, basketball legend Michael Jordan, the incomparable Miss Piggy, NYPD Blues' Dennis Franz, and my own friends and family. It's an hour of holiday inspirations, and whether you make a wreath or a handmade gift, choose a farm-grown tree or ice your first gingerbread cookies. I hope it will start a new tradition in your home. I'm Martha Stewart. Welcome to my home for the holidays. Come on, Maxie. Why don't you find the most beautiful, big, full trees, any variety you like? It always feels like Christmas when it's time to pick out the tree. The question is, which one? At a local tree farm, you'll find the freshest evergreens, and you'll also support America's family farmers. This year, I'm cutting my own tree at the Jones Tree Farm with my nieces and their friends. And we'll have the help of Star Childs, one of Connecticut's best-known foresters. These white pines look like great big petticoats. Yeah, well, they, they're beautifully done. They, they cultured these trees beautifully. They're full, they're thick, they have great shape. The problem with the pine, as opposed to some of the other trees, is that it's very hard to put hanging ornaments on it. So most of the time, this is decorated with ornaments that can lie closer to the surface, sometimes bows, uh, strings of popcorn and, and uh, cranberry, for instance. It, it lends itself to that type of decoration. You know what I did one year? No. <laughs> Covered the entire tree in blue angel hair. It was a big mistake. Aunt Martha, here's a blue spruce. Oh, what a beautiful specimen. What do you think, Star? That's a beautiful tree. It's got a great shape. It has that true conical form of the, of the blue spruce. The great thing about the spruce is that, it, unlike the pine, has much stiffer branches. So it's excellent for hanging those heavier ornaments. It's very prickly. It is. The, the old saying is you can't shake hands with a blue spruce like you can with a fir. Absolutely yeah, not. <laughs> but it'd keep the cat out of the tree. And if you have toddlers, the toddlers won't go up and push the tree over very quickly, that's for sure. But now, as opposed to a fir, what do you think? Well, it doesn't have the fragrance of a fir. Needle retention's not quite as good as oh, a really? fir in terms of the longevity of the needle. Why don't we go look for some firs? These are very beautiful trees. Well, these are the firs. This is the uh, Fraser fir, actually. People love the fir trees because they have a wonderful aroma to them. It has that fragrance of Christmas. Oh, the, I the love that smell. You know, I love to make balsam-filled pillows. I use the needles. Yeah, a lot of people like to uh, take the branches from their balsam firs or from their wreaths and then dry out the needles such that they drop off. Then you collect them. And of course, as you do, you put them in your pillows. Well, this tree is a nice shape, nice and even all around, and it would be perfect for one of the parties that I'm going to have this Christmas. Now, when you get this tree home, of course, there's the trick to keeping it fresh. Once you've cut it here, and here's the saw, oh, okay. you'll also <laughs> take it home and give it a second cut, and then put it up in the stand and get water to it immediately. And if you just keep water in that stand, that tree will stay as fresh as it, as it is right here. For a few weeks, okay. keep it away from, out of the keep sun, water yeah, and out of the sun, and away from the radiators. I've always the radiators. been told, right? and it'll last for weeks and weeks without even dropping a needle. It is a beauty. Well, thank you so much for telling us the difference between the firs and the spruces and the pines. It's really been my great. pleasure. Ready to start cutting down the trees, girls? Yep. Okay. Oh boy, it's a big one. This takes some elbow grease. Oh, I'm getting close to the end here. There it goes. 
Christmas. Timber. Timber. Merry Christmas. And Merry Christmas to you. <laughs> Okay. Do you know Miss Piggy is trying out a new hair color for her holiday party? You'll see when we come back. the smell of ginger, cinnamon, and cloves. I can't imagine Christmas without gingerbread cookies. And... Come on in. Miss Piggy. Hello, dear. Hello. I'm throwing a bit of a soiree next week. Soiree, that's French for bash. <laughs> and I was hoping to borrow a few things, dear. Well, how nice to see you. I haven't seen you for an entire year. I notice you changed your hair color. Yes, brunettes now have more fun. Oh. <laughs> well, you notice mine's getting a little darker. No, dear, not vu. <laughs> may, I, may, may I possibly borrow a few things? Do you mind being a good neighbor? Well, if you just take a few things. Of course things. I will. All right, Bernie, Billy Bob, Martha said yes. Back up the truck. What? Make sure you get the good wreaths, you know, the ones with the pine cones. Just a friend of mine. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Oh, look, cookies. I'll take mm. two pounds of those uh, gingerbread ones and a pound and a half of the sugar cookies. Do you know how long those take to make, Miss Piggy? Who cares? Do you remember last year that we made together a gingerbread mansion? Could I forget? Well, it was all to code, wasn't it? It was to code, exactly. Well, using a similar kind of recipe with all that fragrant spice. Can you smell? Mmm. Mm. Nice, mm. huh? Well, that same kind of recipe makes the most beautiful decorative cookies. So I bet you we're going to make cookies. We're making cookies. Would you like to just stay a little while? Sure, sure, sure. OK. Well, I wanted to Get show you. Get the good you. china, guys. <laughs> Sorry. I would just love to show you how I make these wonderful cookies. All different shapes made out of a giant cookie cutter go snowflake. To the bank to buy that thing? And a wonderful star-shaped cookie cutter. Mm. And you can go into smaller shapes like this. Uh -huh. And do you like that one? Little incy beansy. Need my glasses to see that. Well, look, this is what I do with this. You cut a star shaped out of the center of a larger cookie, so you have a nice hole in it. Oh, how obsessive. Yes, just as a little, little decoration. Martha, but... why, why, minute, why go to all the hard work of decorating the cookies when your guests are going to scarf them down in a few minutes anyway? <laughs> well, first, I'm go I want to hang these on my tree. I'm making a snowflake tree. Oh, these are not for eating? Oh, yes, they're totally edible. So you got to eat them from the tree like this? Yes. Ah, like yes, that? In indeed. Okay, Martha. And if you want to hang tree. them on your tree, look, this is the secret way to hang them on a tree. Using the Not same... Not very secret anymore, is it? <laughs> same royal icing uh -huh. and a silver thread uh -huh. or a ribbon, and you just put some icing over the ribbon, and you have a nice little thing to hang on the tree. <laughs> Do this before you decorate your cookies. And look, these... Mm. Oh, my gosh, you're going to love these. Look, three different size silver balls. Do you know what they're called? Dare I ask? Dragues. That's French. Aren't they beautiful? Look. Dragues. Little teeny, teeny ones. Excuse me, I'm having fun saying that. Dragues. <laughs> we have to have some. Do you like Excuse this? Excuse me, I'm sorry, I can't talk now. I'm working on my dragues. Oh, lovely. Well, I'm using the medium dragues on the medium my dragues. mounds of. You don't mind if frosting. I don't write that down. <laughs> I can't spell drague. It's very easy. I have enough trouble with medium. <laughs> Now, see how pretty when they're all put on the cookie? So, once you finish decorating your cookies, uh -huh. then you can pack them up as gifts in boxes like this. Oh, this did you a... make that box? Oh, I didn't. No, no. This is made in Vermont, and I like to fill them to the top with these delicate cookies. So, you got to and... trudge to Vermont to get the box? Yes, or... How about like a paper bag from the grocery store? A cellophane bag would be very nice. Cellophane bag? Yes. She's got a back turn. Get some more stuff, guys! <laughs> <laughs> then you package them up with beautiful ribbons Ooh. and how do you like these little millinery fruits? Oh, sweet. Or hang your cookies on a tree. This is a goose feather tree. And these are the sugar snowflake oh, cookies. The do they have dragons on them? Oh, they do indeed. Want oh. to see how I make those? Do I have a choice? No. Oh, OK. <laughs> 
And now I'm going to show you how to make those fabulous, fabulous snowflake cookies. That was, those, those, those things are wonderfully packed there. Very nice. Would you like the one with the magenta ribbon? Hmm? Yes. Okay, now those look. Those are my eyes. These are the snowflake decorations made out of royal icing. Hmm. So, now, this is easy. It, you might think it's For complicated, you. but it isn't so complicated. Okay, show Here me. Here is a tracing of a snowflake. And you know what the main characteristic of a snowflake is? They're cold. Well, they're cold, but what's the thing that what am I, distinguishes school? snowflakes? None of them are the same. That's exactly Every the Every single snowflake is different from the other. That's the characteristic. Which I personally do not believe. <laughs> well, I do. Okay. So you take a tracing like that, uh -huh. or for demonstration purposes, for uh -huh. you, slightly simpler. And then you cut... Ho, 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 ho! Simpler for me? I think that pigs... Yes, are watch it, lady. ...extremely intelligent. Oh, personally, not all pigs are that smart. <laughs> oh, are you discriminatory? Personally, I know some pigs who are no rocket scientists if you get my drift. Well, yeah. I only know you. <laughs> now, you put and a piece of wax paper on top of our tracing, uh -huh. so you can use the tracing over and over and over again, uh -huh. and you can remove the frosting from the tracing. Uh -huh by taking it off the wax paper. Uh -huh. You just pipe wet icing uh -huh. very carefully. Wait, let me see, let me see, let me see. Don't knock my arm. Oh, please see. don't knock my okay, arm. Okay, go ahead, knock it. Oh, I'm just gonna okay. look. Okay, up, and just keep piping. Uh-huh. Do you like wax paper? What about it? Well, I love, I love wax paper because it is, you know, Wait, Martha, hold it, hold yeah. it. You love wax paper? I do, it's one of those papers I really love. Alrighty. Guess what? This snowflake is almost done. Yeah, Once... my guys are almost done. Well, let me see how you're doing this. Really. Okay. I'm, I'm quite curious. And now what happens? And now you put your little silver drag A's. What do you think? You own stock? I don't, but I should. Uh -huh. Sprinkle with a little sugar and let it dry overnight. I have one that's dried. Now watch. You release it from the wax paper like release that. Release it. Born free! <laughs> The secret is, if you want the back to look as beautiful as the front, you do the whole design over again. All and before, over again? Before it dries, you again apply your silver dragues and the dragues. a sprinkling of granular sugar. It has to be granular? Yes. Let that dry, mm -hmm. and then you'll get these amazing, individualistic, everyone different snowflakes what to hang second? on your tree. And how many of those do you make? Hundreds and hundreds and hundreds. Okay, well, if you're a retiree, that sounds great. Are you finished packing up? Let me see. Billy, Billy Bob! Bernie, how you doing? Hey, don't oh. forget to take the plastic snowman on the front lawn! It's oh. been wonderful. Come to the party here. I will. Oh, but can I come with you now? If you'd like. I'd like to see what you took. You want to see what I took? Yes. Get the stuff out of the truck! We're going inventory! Well, I'm going to get dressed. Martha! Martha! Martha, where are you? Martha? Here I am. Billy Bob wants to talk to you. He wants to negotiate. Oh, okay. Oh! And where did you get that idea from? Well, maybe from you, Miss Piggy. You have lots of ideas. You going brunette next? If it works for you. Would you give me a hug, please? I love you, Miss Piggy. Just before you see what we took. I love you. Oh, yeah, sure. Oh, look at this. Listen, let's Two go. Two temptresses. <laughs> Come on. Let's go look at what you took and keep a list, okay? <sighs> okay, girlfriend, let's do it. <laughs> let's go. Miss Piggy! Do you know that pepper berries come in many shades of red and pink? Make a berry wreath next. Hey, Papa, look! It looks like we have our own miniature little tree farm. All we have to decide is which tree to give to which person. I love giving these living trees as gifts. They remind us to return to nature something of what we borrowed during the holidays. I like to place the potted tree right in a galvanized bucket. Be sure to attach the instructions for planting and for caring. I like to just write them in a pretty little book like this. Homemade, of course. Tie the bucket with a silver ribbon, and you have a gift that is truly evergreen. Most everyone has one special holiday project in mind each year, and I hope you'll consider trying a homemade wreath. One way to begin is with the native plants of your own region. I can imagine the pioneer women finding bright winter berries and evergreens to bring into the darkened home during the winter months. As they discovered so long ago, there are wonderful things to be found all over America, right in your own backyard. I'm using several kinds of berries for this particular wreath, and I've gathered the berries. They're hawthorn berries. 
their toyon berries, crab apples, and even some hypericon that have a little bit of green leaf still attached. And you make little bunches. Wire the bunches together with your 24 gauge wire that you have on a paddle. Wrap very tightly around the stems of the berries. Then take the bunch and wire it right to your wreath frame. These wire wreath frames are available in craft stores and in floral supply stores. And they give you a very, very good basis for almost any kind of wreath. Just keep going around until you make the entire wreath. And when you're done, you have a wreath that's homemade and extremely beautiful. And yeah, that one's so, so beautiful. I love how it looks. Another very special berry is the pink pepper berry. And this would look very nice with a candle in the center. And I have this very pretty glass hurricane. How lovely that'll look on a side table or on a deep windowsill. This is a very unusual wreath. This is made out of galax leaves. Galax leaves are a very pretty leathery, shiny leaf that grows close to the ground. And a bunch of galax costs a dollar at the florist. And what we do to make this wreath, and you can see it looks like a bunch of old fashioned roses, is to create from the galax leaves some rosettes. The galax wreath dries beautifully and turns a wonderful silvery color. It can last for years. So the method for making wreaths is often the same. The results are very different. When I was growing up in Nutley, New Jersey, every year we tried something different for Christmas at our Elm Place house. The year we made garlands and surrounded the windows and doors, the neighborhood went crazy. When my nephew Christopher gets here after school, he's going to give me a hand. To make a big garland like this, you need pieces of evergreens, like Douglas fir. This is Douglas fir. Here's some black pine and some juniper. The garland's base is a double piece of twine. This serves the same purpose, actually, as a wreath form, only the twine gives you the flexibility that a garland needs to wrap around doorway frames and arches. You don't have to wire this bunch because you're going to wire it immediately onto your twine using that same paddle of 24 gauge wire go around and around the twine pulling the wire really securely don't be afraid to use too much wire because this is what's going to hold that garland secure and in place hi martha oh chris hi how are you oh i'm so glad you came we have so much to do here and i was just saying how Team effort is extremely important when you're trying to decorate your entire house for a party. <laughs> well, sure. What do you want me to do? <laughs> oh, well, I'd love you to finish this fruited garland, which I'm going to use as a centerpiece for the table. This has a base of twine also, but you have to make bunches mm -hmm. because everything's very heavy. So you can start on that. Okay. And um, I'll show how to make those beautiful um, stars out of pine cones. These, these are from the white pines down in the Easter field. Oh, really? Aren't they great? Yeah. We had such a crop of pine cones. So what you do is wire around the base of the pine cone. So you can go into nature and find things for wreaths from your backyard or from your neighborhood. And the same thing with these wonderful pine cones. And you make clusters of 20 to make these beautiful stars. Maybe you could uh, put this up there. Sure. I have to just finish that doorway. So you can put that up there. I love how this looks. And that looks just right, right up there. Mm. Is it real secure? Yeah, it is. Yeah, that looks good. Okay. Yeah, secure enough so that if a big wind comes or a big snowstorm, they'll stay up there. Well, come on down and you finish this garland and I'll work on my garland and uh, we can talk about school. <laughs> Your favorite subject. Oh, yeah. <laughs>
simple gifts, there's a world of meaning in those two words, which happen to be the title of an old Shaker hymn. At holiday time, when it's so easy to be tugged in different directions, it's a philosophy I try to remember. On this table, I've pulled together a range of fresh colors and textures and scents for gift making and gift wrapping for this season. Just look at this wonderful fabric. It's Tulle, named after the town in France, where it was first mass produced. It's very inexpensive and it comes in fantastic colors. And this year, I'm wrapping tissue paper covered boxes with this tool. A gift wrapped like this is just so exquisite. I've chosen an orange ribbon and a brightly colored pink ribbon to tie around this gathering. And to add additional embellishment, I'm using some old Christmas balls. This whole bowl of balls and many, many more I found at a tag sale this summer. And in the summertime, when you're not thinking Christmas, is probably the best time to find all the kinds of little things that you'll use on your packaging at holiday time. And this is all tied up. They're so pretty, they remind me of going to the ballet. And here's another gift that I think is so effectively wrapped. These simple white boxes look like fancy candy boxes from a wonderful chocolate shop. You know, they can hold jewelry, a scarf, a tie, or just about any small gift you can think of. And with these pinked edges, they're very easy to make. What you need is a plain white box. This is just a candy box that you can buy at a craft store or a cake decorating store. And you need some stiff paper. This is 300 pound weight watercolor board with a very beautiful texture. It's what gives this perfect top and bottom to the box. And what you do is trace your box on the paper. I like to conserve the paper, so I go close to the edge, as close as I can go, leaving approximately a quarter of an inch on these two sides. Use a pair of pinking shears and cut as close to the edge as possible, still resulting in that fabulous pinked edge. This piece you just glue on the top and the bottom of the box using a craft glue. And when you want to decorate, you tie with a string or a cord or a ribbon. I love using this waxed string. It comes in all these different colors and many more. And you can affix berries or evergreens, a little bit of boxwood, or even a pretty bead. But my favorite present this year are these balsam pillows, a very fragrant reminder of the holidays. These larger pillows are covered in soft wools, and these smaller ones, which are so pretty to be used as sachets, are covered in China silk. Look at all the wonderful shades that this silk comes in. This is a very homespun idea. Country women used to make gifts of scented pillows for their city friends who lived far from the woods. And it was just like sending a breath of fresh air, and it still is. You just make two squares of fabric like this, put right sides together, sew all the way around the sides, leaving a small opening. Turn the pillow inside out, make sure you pull out the corners so they're nice and square, and fill the pillow with balsam needles. These needles you can capture from your own Christmas tree year to year, or you can buy them in bulk through mail order catalogs. We got these from Aspen Tree Farm in Saranac Lake, New York. The slip stitch the opening, and then tie the pillow up with a brightly colored ribbon, and you have a gift that your friends will remember from year to year. My hunt for interesting wrapping materials and techniques never ends. Take this wonderful material that we found this year, for instance. It's called glassine. It's sort of like a parchmenty waxed paper and is easily available at art supply and photo supply shops. And when a present is wrapped, it looks like frosted glass. I like to wrap my presents with brightly colored tissue papers. You know, if they were wrapped in this only, they'd be almost too bright. But when they're covered with a glassine, you get this terrific soft sheen. I really like how it looks. And uh, they're also available, these very nice little envelopes and bags made out of glassine that are used for archival purposes like photographs or uh, philatelists use these for stamps too. I like to use these as little name cards on every package. Great ideas, so simple and so easy to do. 
and for the eight days of Hanukkah or the 12 days of Christmas, tie small and special gifts on a string like this, hang one chain per person, and you can celebrate the holidays every day. Michael Jordan can score 10 points in the time it takes me to ice a cookie. Here's a great recipe for a children's party. Take a holiday project like icing cookies or trimming a tree and create your own variations. at the New York Athletic Club is for the children of friends and colleagues, and a sports theme is perfect. Does it look like you? I think so. Gus Monstar. Kids love decorating unique cookies, yet they're still learning the finer points of pastry bags and royal icing. When you're decorating cookies, a secure, stable surface. The three S's. Oh, great. Oh, brighter. What cookie do you have, Donnie? It's Monstar. He plays against Michael Jordan in the movie Space Jam. Do you like this guy? No, I don't even want to eat him. <laughs> or you can decorate another cookie for Michael Jordan. I'll never see Michael. He's too famous for me. Well, you know what? Christmas is a time for dreaming. Why don't all of you get a cookie and hang it on the tree, okay? Find the ones with your names and put them on the tree. Everything in place? Yeah. Everything but the star. So, Martha, what can I do? Michael Jordan! Hey, do you think you can get the star on top of the tree? I uh, might be. <laughs> You're so tall. I'm all You're right. so great. Let's yeah. see if he can do it. You know what? This is a dream come true for all these kids. Never in a million years would they guess that you would be here. Well, I'm glad I could make all these dreams come true. And guess what? I bought some presents for everybody. Oh, 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 oh Merry Christmas. Look at everybody. Dig deep. Everybody must have been good. Santa Claus is nice. This one is kind of special. Where is it? Oh, look. There you go. This is for you. Hey. Yeah. Hey. You don't want any help, do you? Yeah. <laughs> you know children, they take their time. I know. Gus, what are you doing, man? You got a handful. Go ahead. Monster. Yeah. <laughs> you like it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you're gonna love I that. I just gave him a Monstar cookie, and guess what? He's afraid of Monstar. Oh, you're not afraid, are you? No. <laughs> <laughs> cookie for you. Oh, Thank so he's you. giving Very you a scary yes. cookie. Man, it smells good. <laughs> it smells good. Gingerbread. Well, thanks for the cookies. I appreciate it. You guys have been really nice. Good, I know you're gonna love this one. I'm gonna love this one. Oh, good. Do you know my grandmother taught me how to make paper ornaments? I'll teach you in a moment. With a little bit of planning, getting ready for the holidays doesn't have to feel chaotic. It can be a comfort, too, especially when family and friends can share some creative time together, making their own ornaments and decorations. This year, I'm having my holiday party right here in the barn, and everything will be in its place by tomorrow. Monika and Lara are perfecting their paper-cutting techniques. Right, girls? Well... <laughs> <laughs> well, now, would you like to make a fancy snowflake like these on the table? Yes. Okay. okay. I'm going to give you each a piece of paper. Here, Laura, you try the silver. Do you like pink? Yes. Okay. And I'll do this fancy, shinier silver. Now, fold the paper in half. Okay. 
And use your fingernails to make sure that fold is very sharp. Really sharp. Really sharp. Now, fold again. This is in the Japanese tradition of origami or paper folding. And then you fold it half and half and half and half until you get eight folds. I'm going a little bit too fast for you. Yes, now in half. And now, and you fold it like an accordion, back and forth upon itself. See, like this and like this. OK, so here you have the pretty paper on the outside, and then you fold this little fan-like accordion in half. Once it's folded in half, Monika, staple right on the crease. Be careful. All right, it doesn't look too Don't. hard. And now, with your folded side up, yes. we cut the other side, the open side, and starting from the folded point in. If you curve it, it'll look like a flower. If you cut it straight, it will look more like a star. And then you cut little bits on the folded side, some sort of little designs to make it look more open, like a snowflake. You can see I'm opening up the f eight. That's interesting. Isn't that pretty? And then you scotch tape. Hi. Hi, Annabella. Oh, would Hi, you like Bella. to try a snowflake? Or how about a crepe paper chain? Paper chain. OK. Now, notice what I'm doing, Monika. I am scotch taping. You see where the staple is? You take the two points from the staple and you bring those together so you just open up your star shape. Yes. And scotch tape with a little tiny piece. Those two? Yeah. Do the same for the other side? Mm hmm Exactly. All right. Punch a hole and a piece of silver cording and it's ready to hang on the tree. So you can make dozens and dozens of these. Any nights nice when you have no homework? Weekends. Not really. On weekends, well, then you devote a weekend to making ornaments for your tree. Oh, that's beautiful. I love how that looks. And this looks just like a poinsettia. It's very, very perfect. Wow, your Ooh. first attempt. Successful. I love it. Look at this. It's beautiful. Very beautiful. Well, now we like to make tinsel snowflake Christmas ornaments. They're really fun to make and so easy. You need two pieces of tinsel exactly the same length, and then the third piece about an inch longer. Take the middle and twist the two pieces that are the same. This is just like a cross. And then your longer piece, you twist also around the middle. There. Look, ready for the tree. I'm going to go do a very beautiful mistletoe kissing ball. Mistletoe is the ultimate Christmas greenery. And this is a mistletoe kissing ball. I like to hang one in my house every year. Actually, before Christmas trees became popular in England and elsewhere, less than 200 years ago, mistletoe was the center of attention. No one knows for sure where the kissing part comes in, but I always enjoy catching a kiss or two or three. This is our variation on the Christmas mistletoe bowl, and we've substituted snowberries for color. And we're gonna build it on a silver mercury ball. This is a classic, what they call in Germany, a kugel, or a Christmas ornament. The little wreath that you're going to make fits over the top of the ball. Using 18-gauge wire, make a little wire wreath frame. Now, the mistletoe should be cut into lengths about four or five inches long. We want to cover both the top and the bottom of this little wire form. Using a 30-gauge wire, just wind it around the mistletoe itself and wire wreath form until you have an entire wreath. Here's your little wreath, and we want to fit it to the ball. Use a little bit very adhesive florist's clay. Just place it gently and with a little bit of pressure. You have a very sweet ball. Now, one last thing. We want to run a ribbon. Oh, my heavens, how gorgeous. Tie this ribbon on top and hang this Christmas mistletoe ball. Well, now we're going to go from this tiniest of wreaths to see what Mariana and Edie have been talking about for all this time while we've been making paper cutouts. What are you doing? 
Edie, are you really sewing? Well, I don't know if I go that far, but I am making a French fringe knot. How beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you just take a pair of Orvis fishing socks, and we dye them all different shades of pink and red. Aren't they pretty colors? Like They're cranberries and, and cherries. And you embroider the stockings, snowflakes, or Christmas trees. And I've been doing these little French knots around the top, which I think are really cute. And always have a little roll top, just sew this on the inside so that these can be hung on your mantelpiece. These are gonna be really pretty. It's such a great idea. But now I have to go finish the tree. I'd love you to see how we do these lights because it's so easy. This is Jerry, my great friend from Sebastopol, California, who's taught me so much about wreaths and using natural materials. And he is the king of the Christmas tree lighting. Oh, that's quite a compliment there, well, Martha. show them all our secrets this year because this is a phenomenal use of lights. Well, it's a great idea to actually mix the lights and the reflectors, and we used five different varieties this time. There are pearl lights, jewel lights, snowball lights, and two kinds of star lights. Big ones and little ones. Right. Just use your imagination, but Jerry does something very, very special. It's real easy to install them if you twist the lights on themselves and then wire them together so that instead of putting up two different strings, you have one string that's more dense. And also, these actually will look too large on the tree, so you can pop them off. So what, you take off two and leave take one? Take off two and leave one. Okay. And it's real easy then that you have the bare light and the one with the reflector. So you really have six different kinds of lights if right. you're leaving the bare lights. Hi, Martha. Hi, Jerry. Oh, oh, what beautiful ornaments. Oh, hang them all on the tree. Christmas is all about sharing traditions and creating new ones. Today is a very busy day on Turkey Hill, creating a buffet for my holiday party. This year, my sister Kathy has a wonderful idea for chilling the punch with a blood orange and pomegranate ice ring. We're going to take the mold form here and put in handfuls of pomegranate seeds. And what we're going to do is we're going to take the punch and fill the mold. You know, rather than using water, which would dilute your punch, always use the punch for your ice ring. When that's frozen and then put in there, it'll keep it cold and it'll be very beautiful. We want to have one prepared, so I'll bring okay. it back. And then Kathy's going to show us how she makes her orange swizzle sticks. Martha, this is a perfect way to keep your punch cold during the party. I love these ice rings. Oh, yeah, it's coming right out. And just put that right into your punch. It looks really pretty in here. It does look beautiful. I think these are fascinating. Just how do you make a curlicue swizzle stick like that. Well, Kathy knows looking. how. That's great. Will Look you show it. us uh, how to peel the orange? Oh, okay, I'll show you that. This is called a stripper. It's a little tool, and just draw it around an orange and make the strips. How long do you want them about? About eight inches. Okay. And these go right into what, a sugar syrup? A sugar syrup. Do you blanch them first? Yes, you do. Uh, which means just sort of pre-cook them a little bit in water just to it get... softens them. Well, it softens them and also gets that bitter taste yeah. out of the orange peel. So cook them in sugar syrup. And, and so... then when the sugar syrup is nice and cool, you um, take one strip, put it around the stick near the top, and then holding it one end with your thumb and forefinger, you just twist the orange peel all the way down to the end. Now these have to be done at least the day before so that exactly. the orange peel has a chance to dry. This one's actually ready to put in the sugar, huh? They slip right off the stick. I like to just dunk it. Right. 
Taste less time and oh, these are really gorgeous. So can you imagine this is how it's served like that or standing up in the glass like that? Should Pretty we try it? Clever. Yes, I think. Would you like a little taste? I love a taste. Okay. Some for you. Okay. And I always like to serve these punches in unusual glasses like this. We can sample. Come on in. Hi, Martha. Hey. Well, ho, ho, ho. Happy holidays. Hi, Martha. I'm Joni. It's good Pratt. to be here. Hi, it's so Joni. nice to meet you. Hi. Dennis. Hi, Martha. Good to see you nice again. Good to see you. Hey. Thanks. I got some Chinese apples I brought. Oh, boy. I I brought Beautiful. These How nice. Yes, from California. Yeah, from your yeah. place? Uh, Did you grow them? I cannot tell a lie. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, I didn't. <laughs> anyway, I can't have enough pomegranates Good. ever. Uh, well, well, come on, enjoy. take your clothes off. Take, All right. We're sort of into the um, punch right now. Oh, see, these are great. Look, you got those little squiggly things going Orange on. Orange swizzle top. sticks. Oh. And let me take Joni for a walk around the house. Oh, oh yeah. Would you like to see I all the stuff? Love it. Oh, okay. Okay. okay, enjoy. And Dennis, you cook. Okay. You love to cook. You stay with me. Okay, you got it. Thanks, Kath. Hey, let me put these down over here. Okay, boy, this looks beautiful. Drink? Yes, and this I need more than one. This is a really good um, punch made out of blood orange juice and pomegranates. Blood orange. Mm. Mm, I hope it tastes better than it sounds. And ginger. Ah, and Taste ginger. It, yeah. Ah. Mmm. I dropped my little squirrely thing just yeah, well, in there. Yeah, well, that's a swizzle stick. You know what wassail punch is? I do not know what wassail punch is. Well, can you get me that big pot over there, Dennis? Sure. You're big and strong. Oh, wassail yeah. Wassail is the traditional. Ouch. Oh, use the pot holders. Thanks. Is the traditional yeah. hot spiced Christmas drink served with baked apples. Isn't that some pot? It's a pot that smells good. What's inside there? Well, about four parts of dark beer, two parts sweet sherry, cinnamon, sugar, and mulling spices. Okay. Little bags, which we're going to take out, yes. of the hot mold spices. So oh. those are the spices, and that you have a little taste of this. And on a cold winter night, uh -huh. everybody would love this. And these little apples. What do you do with those? The secret of these, yes. two minutes and baked in the microwave. They keep pink. Uh -huh. A little brown sugar, a little cinnamon. They stay and, that color. Yeah, if you put them in the oven, you'd lose that red skin. I love uh, how that looks. What do you do with those? A little baked apple goes right in it. Oh, isn't that great? So it's a garnish. Take oh, a I can't little this sip. Is great. These are mulling spices. These oh, are. Well, look at that. Look at this combination of stuff. Doesn't it smell good? Mm. Can you name all of these? Of course, it's Bob and Andy and Ted and Jim. <laughs> In here, actually, candied ginger, candied orange peel, cinnamon sticks, allspice berries, cloves. This is delicious. Nutmeg, star anise, bay leaves. Nice, huh? Beautiful. Tastes good. This is it's truly delicious. So it's dark beer, like a Guinness, you know, something mm -hmm. really it's stuff. Nice. And another nice thing that you can do is make these little bags like that of spices and oh. package them in these little bags, and you give the recipe for the wassail. And I like to give this as gifts as people leave the party. Gosh, what a great taste. So, <laughs> this is wonderful. You know, carolers would carry their wooden bowls yes. and go from door to door yes. and even pay a pence or two for a drink like that. Would you pay me a pence or two? If I had a pence, yes, I would. Okay. <laughs> I'd give you a couple of pence for this is good. You can sing the song. You know how it goes? Here oh. we go, a wassailing, a wassailing. I, I am a wassailing man, and then we'll, we'll <laughs> wassail together. Anymore. Hey, Joni, Kathy, come on and have some, back. Great. have some of this Great here. Time. Honey, we've been Try wassailing and, <laughs> and <laughs> cooking, yes. I'll remember wow. this. Yeah, yeah. Well, cheers. There you go. Cheers, wassail. wassailing among the leaves so green. Here we come a wandering so fair to be seen. Love and joy come to you. A Christmas buffet is the perfect way to entertain. Salmon gravlocks ready to slice, a Provençal onion tart, an assortment of delicious cheeses and breads, and a maple glazed smoked ham with all the fixings. Well, everything's almost done. I want to welcome you to my home for the holidays. And don't forget the desserts. Chocolate zucato, poached pears and English trifle, steamed puddings, meringues, and Miss Piggy's snowflake cookies. There are bowls of ginger and blood orange punch and my fluffy spiked eggnog. In just a few minutes, I'll have the pleasure of seeing my friends and my family enjoying it all. Oh, Christopher, thank you. This is just what I need. Merry Christmas.
together like this is the true essence of the holidays. Until we meet again, here's wishing you and all of your loved ones a happy, healthy holiday season.